The very first mill to be built here was by George Frederick Bollinger around 1800. Leslie McDaniel says Bollinger updated and expanded the operation until his death in 1842. When he passed away, his daughter Sarah and her two sons ran the mill until the Civil War, when it was destroyed by the Union troops during that war because they were accused of passing meal and flour into the hands of the Confederates. After the war in 1867, Solomon Richard Burford built a new mill here. The picturesque four-story structure is the one you still see today. A lot of people come to the mill, they're expecting to see that water wheel on the outside of the mill, and it just isn't here. The first two mills, George's first two mills, would have had those water wheels. But the wheels required lots of maintenance, and they didn't weather well. So the new mill, built in 1867, used a water turbine placed underneath the structure. After World War II, about 80 percent of these types of mills, grist mills, shut down across the country because of the new regulations that the government put in on milling. You had to have the stainless steel spouts and you had to do these upgrades and they either couldn't afford it or they just didn't want to do it. This mill remained in business grinding livestock feed. It was built along a major highway at the time and even had a covered bridge leading to it. It had an improved road, which meant to at least chat on it, possibly some boards for the treads of the wagons. And it ran from Cape Girardeau all the way out through Jackson to the end of Burfordville. But finding a bridge and a mill in this close proximity is pretty rare on the American landscape. The mill and covered bridge truly make it one of the most visited and photographed sites in the state.